Viewers were left in tears last night after watching the ITV documentary Kate Garraway Caring for Derek. Filming began just as Derek arrived home from hospital after 374 days. The programme laid bare Kate's realities of looking after her husband at home and the emotional toll it has taken on her. I think one of the worst things is the terrible loneliness that you get from having him here but not here is really indescribable, actually. It's, I don't know, it's just so hard because I can sort of see him, but he's absent and you just feel very much on your own. Oh, I just want to reach into the screen and give her a hug, don't mm. you? It was it was a tough watch, wasn't it? Yeah, I, w I watched it last night of Richie, and we were both moved to tears. Um, I think it's really heartbreaking uh, to see what Kate and her children um, have been through. And I think throughout the whole pandemic, you know, she held it together, she was working, and she's been really, really courageous and dignified. Um, and, you know, seeing what she says in that clip there, it just really reminds you that, yes, Derek's back, but he's back as a, a shell of his former self. And I think she's a single parent, you know, and, and that's what she's doing. She's holding it together in the public eye at work, the, the, the breadwinner. She's holding it together for the children, pretending that everything's OK. And, you know, it's, it's clearly not. Yeah. Um, it, it, it sort of highlights, doesn't it, also the different types of... Cos you could be caring for an elderly parent, obviously she's caring for her husband, you could yeah. be caring for a child. Um, I mean, there's six and a half million people in the UK now are unpaid carers. Mm. And, Janet, I think Kate would be the first to say that she's probably, you know, in a more privileged position than three, but she's sort of using her story to highlight how hard it is for everybody. I think what came across in the documentary that even she, high-profile Kate Garraway, couldn't get through to a GP and was left hanging on for hours. And I think speaking from, uh, you know, conversations I've had with my friends who've had to care for their ageing parents, how you put together the care that your parent or your elderly relative might need is challenging mm. for mo really, really challenging for most people and you are going to have to pay for some of it and that causes you immense worry and concern and then your relationship with that person because you're in the house together 24 hours a day and more people are coming in like you saw in Kate's house, how, even in Kate's house, carers are coming in in shifts and a physio's coming in and people are working with Derek to try and move him on a tiny fraction. It sort of throws a hand grenade into everything you knew, thought you knew about your life. Yeah, I think the other thing that came across, and one of the carers says this in the film, that when you're caring with some, for someone you're so close to, you put them first and the result is that can be that you're yeah. forgetting about yourself and you're not looking after mm. yourself. We've got a clip of that, I think. Let's have, a, let's have a quick look. How's Kate doing? I think Kate is an unbelievable woman. Um, but there is a part of care that is called self-neglect, where individuals pay too much attention in the well-being of their family member or partner that they even forget about taking care of themselves. Yeah, I mean, mm. self-care is important, Linda, isn't it? it because is, obviously yeah. if you fall off the perch as well, exactly. it's not going to help anyone. Well, Kate lived in the road, in the same road as me, so I know Kate quite well and Derek and the kids and that. I used to uh, dropping the kids to school every morning and picking them up in the afternoon and that. But it must be so difficult, honestly, because they'd been together a long time. And obviously, during lockdown, he's been in hospital most of the time and she's had to be the one going to work and looking after the kids, and now he's home. That's another person she's got to look after. I know she's got help in that, but it can, it can never be... I mean, you saw her in the laundry room, she's having to do so much washing and looking after them and that. But, I mean, we've all been carers at some time in our life, and we will be carers at some... Like, if it's caring for your children or caring for elderly, okay. like, parents. Like, cause my mum had dementia and she went into a... Home. But at first she was at home and we were looking after my sisters and, and me would take it in turns of a night to sleep with her and then she went into a hospice and then we'd go there every day to see her. But it was just... It's the hardest time watching someone that you love and obviously yeah. 
they love each other, um, just deteriorate in front of you and knowing that that person's probably never going to get better again. It's hard um, to know that, I mean, I'm sure, you know, the pandemic has made everything a whole lot worse, of course, but it's hard to know what the solution is because I think a lot of people, you know, they pay into the system all their lives. Yeah. yeah. And then they sort of think, you know, well, OK, I am going to be able to access services when I need them. But the councillors have all cut back on services, plus you, as Kate says in the documentary, you've got to access all different services. Yeah. So what I'd like, uh, I think Kate's done a great job of raising awareness, but what I'd like to see happen now is that if she can pair it to make another documentary, helping people uh, understand how to access care and also bringing pressure on the government and councils to make it easier yeah. and more financially Yeah, because accessible. if you think it's a tough time anyway, isn't it? And having to navigate yeah. those complex systems. And it being your partner, you know, this like moral dilemma of the vows you take, you know, for sickness and in health and those dynamics changing in that relationship, you know, wrongly attaching this guilt to that of, of, of handing over that duty to someone else. Like, I can understand why she's done what she's done. She's tried to, to be everything to everybody. Mm. And, and it's exhausting, like that carer said, it takes its toll. And, you know, she needs to fill herself back up to be able to yeah. take care of those kids as well. I mean, as she herself said, you know, I mean, everybody kind of wants to care for the people that they love. And she said, I, I see it as a privilege, but, yeah. but it is so important to, to look after yourself. But, you know, another alarming statistic, 600 people in the UK give up work every single day. Mm to care for an older or disabled relative. You know, that, that is a, yeah. a statistic that tells you very much uh, that, that, yeah. that, a, that it's a big issue. I think it's important to say that our heart goes out to Kate and to all the carers out there yeah. as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really admire her. No, absolutely. Well, if you've been affected by Kate's story or you're struggling to care for a loved one and are looking for help, all of the information you need is on our website.